Right, hello guys. I am back, as promised, with a tutorial for hair. Oh, that's going to take me a long time. Look at that. It's a couple of audiobooks worth of hair, that is. Right, what do I do first? Well, I'm going to need to choose a palette. Let's put this aside and get a nice little jar, empty jar, to plonk some colours into. Right, let me access my vast array of pencils, which you guys can't see because they're off camera. I will show them to you one day, I think. First off, let's have a think about this. We're still going to need some skin tone underneath that hair. So I think one of these uh, burnt ochre 50%. I've got another one of these on the way. It's almost dead. Venetian red. Oh, by the way, this is this is a uh, Caran d'Ache luminance. This is a uh, Faber Castell polychromos. Venetian red. So we've got some darker browns here as well. So let's add Van Dyke Brown. This is sepia, 50%. I think I'm going to put this in here. I think we need to put some cinnamon in there. My trusty polychromos cinnamon. These all kind of cross over. You know, they're nice to use in conjunction with each other, these three. There's areas looking a bit like this. I'll be kind of laying a base, probably using these colours, uh, and then afterwards I'll be doing the hairs, which is going to be interesting. I've got my trusty electric eraser, which is going to be used a lot here, because we've got a lot of white strands. Yeah, this is going to be hard. This one's going in. Uh, polychromos dark sepia. What have I got here? No, that's a bit too blue, that grey. Silver grey. Really nice grey though. We're getting some warm greys here, really. What's the difference between a warm grey and a cold grey? I'll talk about that in another video. This is a French grey in the luminance range. I think this is relevant, almost exactly relevant to what we're doing here. You can have a look at that colour. That is a nice warm grey. So that's going into our palette. I think I'm just going to load up with quite a few different colours here. It's nice to actually get lots of colours. You might not necessarily use them all, but having them all there, you get to explore different colours, you can choose, see what's right, and eventually you get to a point where after doing, you know, about a half an hour of doing his sideburns or something, you kind of figure out what colours to use in conjunction with each other, and others take uh, a back seat, but nonetheless you need to get a whole load of colours together. Here we go, we've got another warm grey here. I'm just going to put all the bloody warm greys in. Come on, warm greys. Yeah, you're a warm grey. And notice I'm using the polychromos ones more in this situation because they're harder. These pencils are harder and they're better for doing fine lines with, really. I mean, I know that the luminance can be sharpened and you can do fine lines with them too. I'm not going to not going to uh, knock the luminance, they're brilliant and everything, but these are harder, so when you sharpen them, they last longer. Uh, you can do more fine strands before sharpening it again. Um, and you can sharpen them a bit finer as well. So, it's always good to do hair with polychromos. Where is my nougat? Polychromos Nougat, where is it? Oh, 
dropped it somewhere yesterday, lost it, and just nowhere to be found now. Pencil crayon fairies got it. Damn it. Ugh, so annoying. I've just literally turned the whole room upside down looking for the thing. Nougat would have been good right now, but c'est la vie. We can just use the luminance alternatives that I've got here. We've got French grey and sepia 50%. Yeah, they'll do. They'll bloody do. Oh, yes, can't forget white. Silly me. White and titanium buff. Mm, or oh, buff titanium, I mean. Great colour. It's, it's kind of like an ivory kind of colour. Oh, love it. Right, that's going in. This is pretty relevant here as well. In fact, I think this might be a bit of a star of the show. This is, ooh, yeah, I'm going to use this one a lot. What is it? It's a raw umber 10%. Oh, so this must be raw umber 50% then. Raw umber 50% and raw umber 10%. If you can see, have a look. These are really relevant to this sideburn. Warm grey one. Again, probably a star of this particular show right now. Warm grey one is where it's going to be at. Mm -mm. Right. So we've got the warm grey. Um, Warm grey sorted out, we've got the skin tone sorted out, we've got one brown in here and a sepia, which I think is enough really, a Van Dyke brown, slightly more mellow than a walnut. Let's get started. So first off I'm going to, I'm going to have a little go just here for you guys so you can see me doing quite a lot of different techniques here. Um, Let's get this base down. Got a nice little skin tone base here that we need to put down first and then erase from it the bits of hair. Now I get my trusty electric eraser. How do I use this? Well, first off, um, I like to replace the batteries actually quite often, just to let you guys know. I mean, it'll keep on going, but it won't be as powerful. And you need it to be consistently powerful because you're going to sharpen it on one of these. Or you're going to cut the end off with one of these modelling knives. What I do is, we want this to be completely flat because we want, we're going to use the edge <coughs> to produce some nice fine hairs here. So this is a Jakar electric eraser. Now I'm just gonna just gonna sand it down. This is like an artist's sanding block. Sometimes sharpen pencils to a very fine point on it as well. I think that's nice and sharp. The edge is really nice and sharp there, yep. And put this sanding block back. Right, so let's have a little go. So you can see this; these hairs kind of start around here where we started, where we added the uh, the base tone. So we're going to just bring that out. Now don't worry about what it looks like initially. The whole point of this is that you go back. You colour a bit, you erase a bit, you colour a bit. You keep on doing it. <clears throat> oh yeah, I've got a great big brush 
for brushing away all my erased bits. It's really important you brush it away because they get stuck underneath things and if they've got bits of dark pigment on them they can get stuck and mar the rest of your work. At this point we now have a look at the rest of this reference. You can see we have got something that's quite a lot like this Venetian um, <clears throat> red that, that's kind of emphasizing these bits. Oh, actually, you know what? There's one color that I missed out. This is probably going to happen a few times. I warn you guys. Two colors I missed out. This Venetian red is nice and everything, but this is an... Oh, what is it called again? The green red or something in the... It's all rubbed out because I've used it so much. It's like a Venetian red, but it's slightly, well, quite a lot darker. And I think this is actually the perfect colour for giving these some definition here. Either that or this burnt sienna. Right, just sharpen them. These three. Yeah, I'm just going through finding all the little bits of detail. Now, you know, I'm not being exact with this. It's kind of, you're kind of approximating, you're looking at it. You, you're kind of trying to create an impression of what you're seeing here. You can't always copy absolutely everything down to the last tiny little detail. Now, I'm like, well, you know what? I want to add some more strands. Add some of these back in. I want to sharpen this. Now, I don't think this sharpener quite sharpens it quite enough. I like to sharpen them a bit more when I'm doing hair like this. So we get the sanding block again. And we rotate the pencil. Make sure you sharpen stuff like this. If you want to have extremely fine detail. Right, this is nice and sharp now. Let's just add these tiny dark details that we've got here. Keep track of the strands. Try and keep track of every strand if you can. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, I think I keep track of quite a lot of strands, but some of them just sort of disappear from my mind. And I just carry on and just approximate, you know? It's something that you can get to grips with. Not, it's not impossible at all. Got some nice little dark bits here. So I'm gonna add that in with this burnt sienna. Just on the edges of this strand. This strand is too thick. We want it to be thinner. So as you can see, hair involves quite a lot of patience and dedication. It's kind of important to try and zone into it really and try to get to a state where you're not thinking too much, you're just working at it. That's why I really like putting on audiobooks because I can just listen to a story, look at my reference and slowly bring about something that is extremely detailed. Hmm, not quite happy with this really. There's the other thing, don't don't stop until you're happy. Keep on going. Such an important part of doing drawings like this. You're unhappy with something, don't ignore it. See where I've erased, we've got the, the papers waiting there. Those white bits is the paper waiting there to be coloured in. 
So this is why erasing like this is good because you can add really fine details, um, bring it back to the paper and then colour that part in again with whatever you want. There we go. And I can see this little bit of hair just rogue bit just jutting across the rest of them so I'm going to put that in right there. And there's a couple of others actually. That's why this erase is so nice because you can you can make a lot of detail and then erase over it, you see. Certain areas of hair which this becomes very useful for. Um now we knock them back a bit as we have been doing. So we don't want them to be entirely visible, they're not all entirely visible, some of them are sort of slightly darker in places. You kind of get the idea. There's a lot of going backwards and forwards. I think I'll do a bit more of a demo when we get to the massive clump of hairs around here. We're going to do this sideburn first, so let's fast forward right now. guys I thought I'd pause the time-lapse now for a second just to show you guys something in fact I'm probably gonna end the video on this so I've decided you know having this cinnamon is quite a nice base um, tone to put down so I'm just gonna do this area now for you guys now that I feel kind of on top of it a bit more now. I feel like I can do it a bit quicker to show you guys in real time because it's always, you know, it's always difficult for people to understand how things happen when it's a blisteringly fast time lapse. Things don't make much sense. So I'm going to try and do it in real time for you guys. Um, at least some of it so you can see you know a bit more about where where this all came from so what we want to do is continue the hair that I've been adding here I'm probably still not finished here to be honest I'm probably still gonna do more <clears throat> if we look here we've got hairs this is the area that we're doing now. We've got hairs going downwards like this, sloping down. We've got some that flick up as well. Well, you should only concentrate on one set of hairs at any one time. So we're going to just ignore the ones that flick up for now. So as a base, I'm going to just start to add the, the ones that aren't flicking up in this direction, sweeping down. I think, I think I'm going to make this a bit darker, this base. Yes, I think this is a better colour right now. Just introducing a darker base, because there isn't much skin when you get to this part of the image. So, it's just lots and lots of grey, warm grey hair. Look at that. Used it too much. Quite a lot of wastage with these. You know, they get to that point and it's too 
too shallow. And I have to get another one out. Oh god, they've gone everywhere. There we go, that's a new one. Don't need to sharpen it, new ones are nice and sharp. So when you get to this point and you start, you know, feeling that you've got some hairs there, you can, they kind of they start appearing, you know, and you can start working into them and around them. I don't know if you guys can see. If I zoom in even more, maybe. Ooh. Yeah, let me leave it at, like that, so you guys can really see exactly what's going on in there. Landmarks are also important. So right here, there's quite a big dark section. I would call that a landmark. Yeah, look at feature of the endless scramble that you're trying to draw. And uh, it really helps to try and notice sort of landmarks and make a mental note of them so that you come back to them, you emphasize them, and you realize where you where you are in the drawing because a big scramble of hair gets very confusing indeed. And it's a very slow process. it's it's you know just you've got to be patient. You've got to just be patient and Again, try and make a good impression of the hair that you see in the reference. Even though I'm taking a long time over this, I'm still not copying it exactly. Uh, you know, not, not every last thing exactly, which, you know, it's just, it takes so long to do that. It's, I'm just sort of making a good impression of what I can see and trying to copy as much as I can see then getting a feel for it and adding bits and pieces here and there until I feel it looks good basically so as you can see I'm just you know as I go along I'm looking backwards and forwards trying not to get lost in the massive scramble of hair and just adding as many details as I can see. See if, see something to add, come back here, add it, look back, what else is there, bring that information back over here, add it in, and keep on doing it. Eventually, you start getting results starts looking the way you want it to. And the beauty of this is you can erase and go back over and erase and go back over and erase and go back over. Now <clears throat> we've got hairs that flick like this. Flick. So we want to do that. And sometimes it's useful to maybe turn your paper around so you can do it but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to do it to show you guys. So be really careful. And as you can see, this is creating layered effects. So, you know, we've, we've just done a layer of hair below these scrambly bits and now we're adding these extra bits and it's giving it a nice new dimension which is you know what hair needs to look like it's you know endless layers of fine hair isn't just a single surface it's multiple surfaces and multiple layers so you've got to try and emphasize that we can now tr start adding around them even more adding a few little shadows below these little strands to sort of make them pop out a bit but at the same time we don't want to lose this this layer underneath either so we need to 
balance the two. Once you've used polychromos for hair, you will not want to use anything else. Well, I mean, unless it's hard. But I find polychromos are probably the best hard coloured pencil you can buy. So there we go, we're adding some more details into this mess that I have to try and draw here. Not not saying anything against Alan Rickman, he does not have messy hair, it's just when you zoom in um, to any hair it is a giant scramble. You know, it'd be really useful, you know, if, if I was a savant and I could just memorise where every strand is. You know, and then just draw them all. So it's sort of getting there now. It's getting a bit better, as you can see. Still nowhere near done as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot more bits and pieces to do here to make it look better than it does at the moment. You need to think about what areas you need to soften up. Sometimes you find when you're doing hair you've made everything too sharp and hard. You might need to soften certain areas up a bit. Ooh, there's a naughty hair here, a really, really naughty one that goes like this. Right over all of them. I like those. Makes a nice difference. It's nice to add a few little rogue hairs now and then that aren't going in the right direction. Little bits of brown here and there. Right, so I'm probably going to just leave it there. And let you guys just soak that in. It's not, it's not finished at all, but you get the idea it's there's a lot of time needed to get hair like this looking right um i will be doing um more hair videos i think because this hair is particularly difficult hair such subtle little differences that you have to draw I think when I'm doing some darker hair, it will be less of a scramble and you'll be able to understand maybe a bit better. But I hope this has helped. So that just about uh, wraps this video up, guys. Keep an eye out for this particular drawing. I will be finishing it probably sometime this week and uploading the time lapse hopefully next week so yeah hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it helped you out thanks guys and i'll see you next time